Previously on Bourbon Moth Woodworking. Well, I showed you I had a closet, and that my wife also has a closet, and that she wanted me to, well, build some closet organization for both said closets. So I designed something on the computer, I made a cut list of a million parts and pieces, and I started ripping down a ridiculous amount of plywood. I'm talking like 21 sheets of 4x8 birch plywood. For two closets. I know, ridiculous. Anyways, once I had all my parts and pieces ripped down, I started putting my carcasses together. And when I say putting my carcasses together, I mean the cabinet boxes. I'm not creating a zombie army or anything like that, so just keep your pants on. Once I had all my cabinet boxes hooked together, well then I actually hooked my cabinet boxes together in like rigid form so that I could build all the face frames for my cabinet boxes. While I was building the face frames, I realized that I don't know if I can actually fit these face frames inside the doors of the closet. So I took one of the frames up there and sure enough, I couldn't really fit it inside. So have to deal with that at some point. I also added some shelves to my side of the closet with some secret under shelf storage for candy. I actually did a full video on this secret storage compartment. So if you want to see how I did it, well, just go watch that video. And that's pretty much where I left off on the last video. Now it's time to get all these boxes and face frames upstairs and inside the closets. Now, I lucked out because this one face frame had a little notch cut out where I'm gonna have a laundry hamper. And I figured because it had a notch cut out, then maybe, just maybe, if I positioned it right, I could fit it all hooked together inside through the closet door. So I wiggled and I shimmied and I shook and sure enough, I just barely managed to get it through the door in one piece. Whew, that was close. Now you might be wondering, why is he bringing the face frames in before any of the cabinet boxes? Well, truth be told, I can actually bring three of the four face frames in and stand them up in place, but only if the closets are completely empty. If I brought the cabinet boxes in, it'd be too small for me to wiggle them around to get them at the right angle so that I could stand the face frames upright. So in order to do this, I'm gonna have to go in a very precise order. I'm gonna have to bring all the face frames in, get them upright, then I can bring the boxes in, move the face frames to one side, put all the boxes for one side on the other side, then move the face frames against that box, then bring the other boxes in for the other sides. I mean, it's this whole process, it's a whole ordeal. Just, just keep watching and you'll see what I'm talking about. Now there was one face frame that I could not get in in one piece, and that was one of the face frames for my closet, which meant that once we got it upstairs and into the master bedroom, I had to lay it down on the floor and I had to take it apart. Now I knew I was gonna have to do this, so I purposely didn't glue it together. My plan was to take it upstairs, lay it on the floor, take it apart, then put it in the closet in pieces and glue and screw it back together once I had it fit through the door. Now I just really had to make sure that I got the face frame on the right side of the closet because if I got those two face frames, you know, opposite of each other, well then it's going to be this whole ordeal to spin them around. So once I had the left face frame on the left side, I brought the right face frame in and I started piecing it back together. Now if you're watching this thinking, what the heck, this is a lot of craziness just for some closet units, well you haven't seen anything yet. It's about to get real. Pretty soon I had the whole face frame for the right reassembled and glued together this time. And now I could just double check and make sure the face frames were roughly the right size. They should fit nice and tight in between the two walls. We have the face frame for the right side and we got the face frame for the left side. And if we had cabinet boxes behind them, it'd look pretty darn good. But you can kind of get the gist of how everything's gonna look. Yeah. They fit pretty good. Got some drawers down here, some cabinet doors up there. Ooh. Now my wife's closet had a little more room to work with because she's gonna have this lower cabinet along the back with a butcher block top. Anyways, we had a little extra space. So I managed to get those two face frames in with no problem. Now that I had all four face frames for both her closet and my closet inside the actual closet, we could finally start the long task of carrying the cabinet boxes into the house one by one. Which just meant that we had to make about, oh, 20 trips from the shop, across the driveway, up the stairs, and into the master bedroom. Here are all the boxes for one closet. Well, one side of 
one closet. So one fourth of the amount of boxes for one closet. First thing I needed to do was push all the face frames over to one side. Then I could start bringing boxes in and putting those on the left side of my closet. Now I built these to go in a specific order. So I had to make sure to maintain that order or all hell would break loose. That's a little dramatic. All hell would not literally break loose. They just wouldn't fit properly. Once I had all the boxes in on the left, I could then slide my face frame from the right over in front of my boxes. And would you look at that? It fits pretty good. I probably only had an eighth of an inch wiggle room left to right, which means I had about a sixteenth of an inch on either side of the face frame, which was perfect. Just enough to run a nice bead of caulking. So once I had all the boxes in on the left side and I slid that face frame over in front of them, then I took the face frame for the right side and I slid that over in front of those and then I went and got a bunch more cabinet boxes for the right side. These are all the boxes for one half of the right side of the closet. And I started carrying those boxes in in the correct order, doing my lower cabinet boxes first and then eventually stacking on my upper cabinet boxes. You know, as I was putting all of these boxes in here, I couldn't help thinking that I literally own about four pairs of jeans and maybe 10 t-shirts. That's pretty much it. I mean, sure, maybe like six flannels and I don't know, eight pairs of underwear, 10 pairs of socks. I just listed my entire wardrobe, yet here I am installing this closet unit that's going to have, I don't know, 18 drawers and six set of cabinet doors and shelves and I don't have that many clothes. What the heck am I going to put in all these? I have no clue. But I managed to get all the boxes and face frames in the correct orientation for my side of the closet. And it was really starting to come together just as I had planned, but I still have no clue what I'm gonna put in here. Now on my wife's side of the closet, she had some floor to ceiling cabinet units that had to be built around a heating duct. Now I knew this heating duct was there and I had always intended to notch out the back of the cabinet so it could sit on top of the duct, but I forgot to do that until we already had the cabinet boxes upstairs. And instead of going to get the proper tools so that it would be easy to cut this notch out, I just grabbed my multi-tool with an extremely dull blade and just burnt the crap out of it. Because I'm a real woodworker. And if I can do something with the tools I have that takes twice as long as going and getting the correct tools, well I will do that every single time. Eventually I managed to notch out the back of all three of my floor to ceiling cabinet units and Craig helped me wiggle them into place. Now, I took very precise measurements from the floor to the ceiling inside the closet. And then I built the cabinets only tall enough that I would be able to lift them up without scraping the top of the ceiling. And sure enough, my measurements were correct and we had just enough room to upright the cabinets inside the closet. And with our precisely cut notch on the back of the cabinet, they set right on top of that heating duct. So one by one, I managed to wiggle these cabinets into place and I was very pleased when they all fit nice and tight. It would have really sucked to have mismeasured something at this point and carry it all the way out of my shop, across the driveway, through my living room, up the stairs, through the door to my master bedroom, across my master bedroom, wiggle it through the bathroom area, into the closet, and then find out it didn't fit. Because then, well, you'd have to take it out of the closet, you'd have to take it back through the bathroom, across the master bedroom, down the stairs, through the living room, out the front door, down the sidewalk, back across the driveway, back into the wood shop, and then you'd have to rebuild it. And then you'd have to do that whole process again just to double check that it fit. So the fact that everything fit the way that it was supposed to, whew, was that a load off. Now, as I mentioned before, if I want everything to fit in here, I have to put the boxes and the face frames and everything in the closet in a very specific order. When it comes to my wife's side of the closet, I can't put the left side boxes and the right side boxes in first because I have to put this butcher block countertop at the back of the closet. So what I had to do was put all the boxes in on the left side, then do this little box at the back, scoot that over, get the face frame all glued on, 
Then I could glue the face frame on the cabinets on the left side of the closet. Once that was all glued and attached, I used some 16 gauge brad nails just to hold it until the glue dried. Then I had to measure and cut the butcher block countertop for the back. Reason being that if I put the cabinets on the right side, I wouldn't have enough room to bring the butcher block countertop in and get it set into position. I'm really glad that I thought through all of this before I just started installing stuff because Again, it would have been a real pain to figure this out halfway through the project. Now I'm just using some birch butcher block that I bought at Home Depot of all places because, well, I didn't want to make my own butcher block. That sounds terrible and nobody has time for that. Once I had it cut to the right width, oh my gosh, there's my wife, then I had to cut it to the right length. You're never gonna see the ends of this, so I just hacked at it with the chop saw. And, well, it looked like I hacked at it. Now once I had this cut to the right size, I gave Craig very specific instructions. I said, will you put some finish on the bottom of the butcher block? Not the top or the sides, just the bottom. Which he immediately went and put finish on just the top. And I was like, Craig, just the bottom. Reason being is because we were still gonna have to move it around and manipulate it and I didn't want it to be all oily when we were doing that. Plus, once we got it in place, I was gonna have to sand and paint on top of it. So, anyways, he eventually figured it out and applied finish to just the bottom. That was after he took it upon himself to sand all the finish that he put on the top off of the top, which really he didn't need to. I mean, it's fine that there's finish on the top. I just thought we'd finish it in place once we were done. Anyways, while he was doing that, I was adding some braces in the corners for the butcher block countertop to sit on, and once we had it all cut to the right length, and he had finished, well, pretty much everywhere at this point, we brought it in, and very carefully, we tried to slide it into place without dinging up the walls. Now, I did add a 45 chamfer to both ends just to make this a little bit easier, and pretty soon, we managed to persuade that butcher block to fit right where we wanted it to. Now you can see what I was talking about with the order in which the cabinets had to be put in here. If we would have put the boxes on the right side, we never would have got that butcher block along the back. It's like one giant finger puzzle. You gotta move all the right pieces around in the correct orientation or they're not gonna fit in. And if there's one thing that going to a public middle school taught me, it's that fitting in is the most important thing there is. I'm just kidding, kids. Always be yourself and don't let anybody tell you you're not good enough. Unless it's your soccer coach and you didn't make varsity again because if they're telling you you're not good enough, well, it's probably because you're legitimately not good enough and maybe you should just give up and try a different sport like badminton or chess. Anywho, before I got too much further along, I wanted to glue that butcher block in place along the back. Now I know someone out there is gonna be like, you're gonna glue that solid wood butcher block to the cabinets? What about wood movement, man? Yeah, I thought about that. And then I thought, you know what? I just don't give a damn. So I glued it in place. And then I screwed it in place. And if it moves, well, it's my wife's side of the closet and I doubt she'll ever say anything. So just deal with it, honey. With my butcher block locked firmly in place, I brought my last three remaining cabinet boxes in and I slid them on top of, well, my, my previous cabinet boxes that I brought in. How many times am I gonna say cabinet boxes? I've said it a lot at this point. I mean, a lot. If this was a drinking game and you drank every time I said cabinet boxes, you would be wasted at this point. I only know that because well, I've been playing that game during this entire voiceover. It's a miracle that I'm even speaking fluent sentences right now. Spaceship. With all of the cabinet boxes in place, see, there I go again. The last thing I had to do was just hook on my one remaining face frame. Then I added a three quarter inch trim piece to the front of my butcher block countertop to give it a little bit of an overhang. I just glued and tacked that in place and I filled my nail holes with some plastic wood nail filler stuff from DAP. Now, as you can see, there's a gap between the ceiling and the top of the cabinets. It's because I could only build the cabinets so tall. As I mentioned, I needed to be able to lift them upright inside the closet. So I had to cover up that gap with a nice piece of trim at the top, kind of like crown, but not really crown because 
Well, it's a closet, and that seems really hard and difficult, and just a piece of wood seemed a lot easier. Then finally, with all my face frames attached and everything trimmed out, it was time to sand. My favorite. Sand all those seams, sand all those filled nail holes. And the horrible part was as soon as I was done sanding, well, then I had to paint. Lucky for me, the cider that I had pressed a few months ago was all ready to drink. There was just one problem. When you're holding a glass of cider and a paintbrush, well, you don't have a free hand to hold the paint. And if you put down the brush so you can hold the paint, well, then you don't have a free hand to hold the brush. So I wasn't sure I was ever gonna get this place painted. But then I just chugged my cider and I had two free hands and away I went. Very slowly, I just worked my way along and hand painted the entire face frame. Now you might be saying, why didn't you just tape it off and spray it? Well, that would have made such a mess and it's really just the face frame. So it didn't take that long. I did one coat of primer, two coats of paint, it took me about a day. And if you go slow, take your time, and make sure to do nice, even brush strokes, you can get a pretty darn good finish that'll match your sprayed cabinet doors and drawer faces pretty darn good. Oh yeah, I gotta make cabinet doors and drawer faces. Oh, hi. You know, at the beginning of the year, I like to sit down and kind of make a list of everything I want to get done that year. But the one thing that's not on my list this year is getting life insurance. Because a few years ago, I was smart and I got on policygenius.com and they helped me find an insurance policy that was right for me. Now I put it off for a really long time because it sounds horrible and hard and I don't like doing that kind of stuff. But they make it so incredibly easy at Policy Genius that, well, it really wasn't that bad. If you don't believe me, just check this out. Policy Genius knows how valuable your time is. Their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Their licensed award-winning agents can help you find the best fit for your needs. They work for you, not the insurance companies. That means they don't have an incentive to recommend one insurer over another, so you can trust their guidance. It's no wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Now, you probably watch that and think, well, that sounds great, but where do I go? What do I do? How do I sign up? Well, that part's easy. You just, well, do this. Your family deserves peace of mind, and a life insurance policy through Policy Genius can give it to them. Head to policygenius.com slash bourbon moth or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. The one problem with building giant cabinets is, well, you can't just stop at building the cabinet boxes. You then have to build the things to go inside the cabinet boxes. It's like a never ending project. So just when I got everything installed inside the closet and I got my face frames all in, I got everything painted and it was looking good. Well, then I had to go back out to the shop and start spending hours of my time building drawer faces and cabinet doors. Now for this, I'm just using some more popular because that's what I used for the face frames. I made a part list and I started cutting pieces down piece after piece after piece, rail after rail, style after style, pile after pile. And one by one, I marked off the pieces on my master list. Now, after I got all the pieces cut to size, well, the work didn't stop there. Then I had to go over to the table saw and I had to add a quarter inch groove down the center of each piece. This is gonna create my shaker style frame and allow me to cut a one inch mortise that will fit inside that groove. Now I'm gonna float a quarter inch piece of MDF inside each panel. So after I cut my grooves, I went over to the MDF, I tested to make sure that it fit okay, and I went back to the table saw to just keep cutting grooves. Now the real sad thing is this is only half the pieces for all my drawers and door faces. Because I cut half the pieces, these are all of my rail pieces. They're the ones that are gonna have a one inch tenon on both sides. Now I cut those ones first because I don't want to mix them up with my style pieces. So once I have all my rails cut, I go over to my dado saw and I use the dado stack to, well, as you can see, cut that one inch tenon. 
I always test the fit on a few scrap pieces first and once I'm happy and I have a nice friction fit, well then I can just run through all the pieces. Or in this case, make Craig run through all those pieces while I work on the other half of my frame pieces, adding another quarter inch groove. Pretty soon, half the pieces had tenons, half the pieces didn't, but all of them had that quarter inch groove, and when put together, created nice frames in all the different shapes and sizes for my drawer faces and cabinet doors. I'm gonna be completely honest. As I cut all these pieces and started to assemble them, I got more and more depressed because I knew with each frame that I assembled meant that that was a frame that eventually I would have to glue together. And eventually I would have to sand and then paint and then sand and then paint and then paint and then install. And there were a lot of pieces. This is gonna take me a while, but I guess that's why the good Lord invented audiobooks. So I put my isotunes in my ears and I listened to 438 separate audiobooks while I glued and assembled each one of these drawer faces and cabinet doors. At any point while you're watching this, if you have stopped and thought to yourself, how in the world can there be so many cabinet doors and drawer faces in two little closets? Believe me, you're not alone. I thought this to myself time and time again. I kept trying to add it up, thinking I had to have made a mistake somewhere. There is no way that all this is going inside two closets. 29 separate drawer faces, 14 separate cabinet doors. But every time I did the math, it checked out. But the good news is, even though there might be a ton of drawer faces, at least I get to spend all my time making the drawer boxes to go with them. So. That'll be fun. But before I can do that, of course, I have to install all of the drawer slides. Now, lucky for me, I'm using Bloom Undermount drawer slides, and they're actually pretty simple to install, especially since all of my drawers are gonna be roughly at the same height from box to box. So I just cut a bunch of scrap pieces of ply to lay out the different heights that my drawer slides are gonna land, and I just used, you know, scrap piece of ply after scrap piece of ply starting at the top and working my way down to set every single drawer slide inside my boxes and make sure that they were all nice and parallel and even and level and all that good stuff. Pretty soon I had moved through all of the cabinet boxes and all of my drawer slides were installed. Now to go have some real fun and build all 29 drawer boxes. I started out by making a master list just like I did for all my drawer faces and cabinet doors, laying out all my parts and pieces, figuring out my measurements, and I determined I only needed seven sheets of 5x5 Baltic birch plywood. I mean, might as well throw that on top of the 21 sheets of 4x8 birch I already used to build the cabinet boxes. The foreman always seems to know when I could use a hug, and I was happy that he came out to give me one and then told me that I was taking way too long and I should get back to work. So I did. Pretty soon I had all the parts and pieces cut for each of my drawer boxes and it was time to sand them all down. But lucky for me, when it comes to sanding and I don't feel like doing it, well, I just make Craig do it. I think he actually enjoys it, because he doesn't complain. It could also be because I pay him and he knows if he complained, I wouldn't. I'm gonna stick with he likes it. While Craig sanded all the pieces, I started assembling all of the drawer boxes. This was no small task, and eventually I had them done. All 29 of them. Now all we have to do is carry them all inside the house. But that shouldn't be that hard. Apparently this is gonna be one of those projects where nothing is easy. While we were inside building drawer boxes, Outside, it was dumping freezing rain all over the driveway, turning the path between my shop and the house into a literal ice skating rink. That's not snow, that's two inches of solid ice. Luckily, between the two of us to carry 29 drawer boxes into the house, it only took about seven trips back and forth. And we only fell about 24 times in those seven trips. But 
We managed to get all the drawer boxes from the shop into the house, and I only had a few bruises to show for it. The one redeeming factor is that with the Bloom Undermount drawer slides, once you have the slides installed and you have the drawer boxes made with the clips hooked on the bottom, really installing them is effortless. You just push them in until they click, and boom, installed. I still have no clue what I'm going to put inside all of these drawers. So many drawers. Jeez. With the drawer boxes installed, it was back out to the shop to do a little final sanding on all the drawer faces and cabinet doors. To do all the edge sanding, I just clamped them together in one big block. This made sure that I could get a nice flat sand and not round over any of the edges too much. Then by hand, I went on the inside of each frame and I just broke down that corner just to make it, you know, feel a little nicer to your fingies. Then I had to drill out for my hinges on all of my cabinet doors. I just did this over on the drill press using a 35 millimeter Forstner bit. And then you don't have to do this next part before you paint, but I like to do it before I paint because it makes it easier. And that is to pre-drill all the holes for your hardware. In this case, we're using these nice brushed nickel scoops, which means I got two holes, one on each side to hold the scoop on there. This also makes it easier sometimes to install your drawer faces because you got two holes in your drawer face that you can put some screws through right into your drawer box. But anyways, once I had everything pre-drilled, sanded, ready to go, it was time to paint, which means that I had to figure out a way to lay out all of these cabinet doors and drawer faces across my entire shop. Now, in the past, I've just hired out the painting. And you might be saying, Jason, why didn't you just hire out the painting this time? Why do it yourself? Well, the quick answer is, I'm a moron, that's why. And sometimes I just do things to punish myself. Sometimes life's just too good, I'm too happy. And I think to myself, Jason, what could you do just to bring yourself down a little bit? And then I have an idea like, oh yeah, make yourself do all the painting. That'll do it. And, well it did. It brought me down quite a bit. To do all of my painting, I used my Fuji Q5 HVLP. Works pretty good. For the paint, I do one coat of the Sherwin-Williams Wall and Wood Primer on both sides. After that dries, I knock it down with a little 220 sandpaper, and then I do at least two coats of the Sherwin-Williams Emerald Urethane. This is my favorite paint for cabinets because it is rock solid and it lays down really nicely. Even when I hire out the painting, I still have them use that paint. Super good. After everything was painted and dry, I started installing all the drawer faces. Again, this was pretty easy because I had those holes on the front of each drawer face that I could, you know, attach the drawer face temporarily to the drawer box and then open it and then add some screws from the inside and then close it and then reinstall my hardware. Anyways, you get the picture. For cabinet doors, I like to turn them around backwards so that the hinges are on the outside. Then I put some tape on my face frame, mark exactly where the hinges are going to be, and then I transfer that mark to the inside of the cabinet, screw in the little clips for my cabinet hinges, and then I flip the cabinet door around and I clip them in place. Just like that. Bada bing, bada boom. Installed. And then once I did that to one cabinet door, well, I just kind of worked my way along. I did that to another cabinet door, and once I had that cabinet door done, I I just kind of went along and worked on another cabinet door until eventually all the cabinet doors were installed and looking very cabinety. After installing all of the inset cabinet doors, I had to add a little tab to the inside of each cabinet box that the door could rest against. You see, the problem with inset doors is that if there is no tab, well, they just want to keep going inside and they don't stay flush with your face frame. So I just glued on a little piece of wood with CA glue and it made a nice little stop for my door. Next, I marked out for all of my door hardware. I'm just going to be using these brushed nickel little poles that match the scoops on my drawer faces. Bada bing, bada boom. All of the cabinet doors had poles on them. And then last but not least, I added rods to the inside of all the cabinets so that we could hang clothes. Because, well, they are closets after all. And approximately six years later, 
I was done with the two walk-in closets. Holy cow, that was a lot of work. Never again. Next time we need closet organization, I'm going to Ikea. Or California Closet, or the storage space, or whatever. Because, yeah, I mean, sure, they look fantastic. I mean, they look money. But was it worth it? I mean, my wife is real happy. She did give me a, a little neck massage, so... Okay, yeah, I'd do it again. Well, that was a total pain in the butt. I mean, seriously, why in the world would you spend that much time and that much money, 30 some plus sheets of plywood and a load of poplar for face frames and hinges and drawers and drawer boxes and cabinet doors and drawer faces and why would you do all that for closets? Because your wife asked you to, that's why. And now that they're done, I have to say, well, they look pretty good. I mean, my wife will fill these up in like two seconds. I could spend the rest of my life trying and I will never have enough clothes to fill up my side of the closet. But that doesn't matter. Happy wife, happy life. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. Check the links down below for uh, all the products and tools and stuff we used. There's a link to our Patreon down there. If you're not signed up on Patreon, you're missing out. And uh, there's probably some other stuff. Merchandise, swag. Go check it out. I'm gonna go take a nap.